Hello friends, family, and potential lovers. This is Sage Advice. I'm Sage. Let's get started. Today we're going to be talking about how to survive on a desert island. <sighs> how boring and useless. Ugh, this cruise is so stupid and boring. <sighs> Why did I sign up for this? Hey, did you blow up the ship I was on because I wouldn't watch your stupid YouTube video? Uh, no. Then why are you holding dynamite? Oh, uh, this? No, no, this isn't dynamite. It's, uh, licorice. See? Wait, this is actually, it's actually pretty good. So now that you're stuck on a desert island, the first thing you're going to want to do is find a source of drinking water. You might have heard the old aphorism that you can survive three weeks without food, but only three days without water. And while this depends on the environment you're in, it's generally true. You should start by looking around for a river or a stream. But if you're not that lucky, you're going to have to try something else. Now you might be thinking to yourself, I don't need to find a stream. <laughs> I, can, I can just make a stream <laughs> with my pee. <laughs> and while that generally works in TV and movies, in real life, all that's going to do is make you more dehydrated. Instead, your best bet is going to be to construct something called a solar still. Basically, you dig a hole in the ground, place a container inside, throw a sheet of plastic over the top, and put a pebble in the center so the plastic kind of droops down. Pretty much what's in this diagram here. The goal is to catch enough condensation so that you have some water to drink. Now, I'll be honest, when I first read about this, I was like, so you want me to sit around and drink dew like a, like a goddamn caterpillar? It just sounds like I'm gonna die anyway, but I have to do extra work. But actually, solar stills can be very efficient if you use the right techniques in the right environment. All right, so now that you hopefully have some drinking water like the well-hydrated caterpillar you are, your next step should be to try and build a shelter. For the location of your shelter, you're gonna wanna choose a place that is dry and flat and not under any cliffs or trees where something can fall and kill you. As for the shelter itself, there's a couple different types you can build. You have your standard A-frame shelter, and then you have a lean-to shelter, which is basically just half an A-frame shelter, and I'm convinced was invented as an excuse by somebody who just was bad at finishing things. And finally, you have your laziest shelter, the debris hut, which is basically just a pile of sticks and leaves that you hide in. But hey, if it works, it works. The main purpose of a shelter like this is to give you a relatively warm and dry place to rest that's protected from the elements. However, they can also serve to protect you from predators. Hey, 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 what do we have here? <laughs> What's that, Harvey? You think there might be a young and vulnerable actress that we can take advantage of around here? <laughs> well, let's check it out then. Hmm. All I see is this impenetrable hut. I don't think we can predate over here. <laughs> Great idea, Harvey. Let's go find a high school talent show. Now that you have water and shelter, your next step is going to be to try and create a rescue signal. The goal of a rescue signal is to alert any passing ships or planes that someone is on the island and needs help. If you have the ability to make a fire, then a smoke signal can be a good option. However, this does require you to be constantly making sure the fire is fueled and producing enough smoke to be seen from far away. Because of this, you might instead want to go with trying to make a message in the sand out of rocks or coconuts. Oh, hey man. Sup, bruh? We managed to find a good source of drinking water. Uh, we, we also were able to build a shelter out of some logs and leaves we scavenged. I think it'll be enough for the three of us to survive, at least for a little while. Oh. Uh, anyway, Jessica's really hurt. I made some splints for her legs out of wooden leaves, but I had to carry her back to the shelter and- Bro, what? You carried her? You know she has the hots for me. What? What? She doesn't have the hots for anyone. She has two broken legs. She could die, man. This is serious. Tucker, I don't know if we're ever going to make it off this island. I might never get to tell my wife how much I love her. I might never get to see my kids again. This... This could be it. The end. Here, on this desert island, dying, alone. <laughs> Alright, well, how's the rescue signal going? Good, bro. Check it.
Now that you have all of your immediate needs taken care of, it's time to start settling in for the long haul. That means it's time to start looking for food. Now this is going to largely depend on what kind of desert island you find yourself on. For example, if you find yourself stranded in the tropics, you might have some sources of food like coconuts or breadfruit. In contrast, if you find yourself on an island near the Arctic or the Antarctic, you may find local delicacies such as snow, snowflakes, flavored snow, or your larger and tastier friend who may have gotten stranded with you. So instead of specifics, we'll go over a few general tips that may help you find food no matter where you are. First tip, catch some fish. Since you're on an island, your best bet for food is going to be fish. You can make a spear out of sticks to spear fish, or you can even catch them with your hands. You're going to ideally want to cook what you catch, but if you can't, you can still eat them raw with a pretty low chance of getting sick. Now you might be thinking, but Sage, I don't like fish. They're slimy and gross. Well, then you're probably going to die. Our next tip has to do with mushrooms. Don't eat them. Not all of them are going to hurt you, but mushrooms are infamously difficult to identify accurately. There are countless species of mushrooms that look very similar to edible species, but are actually deadly. In short, if you eat wild mushrooms, there's a really good chance you'll end up seeing God. And probably not in the fun way, more like in the way where you die. Finally, if you come across a plant that you think might be edible, give it a sniff. Does it smell like almonds? If so, throw that plant far away from you and never go back. This is not only because almonds are arguably the worst nut, it's because something smelling like almonds is a sign that it may contain cyanide, a deadly poison. So there you have it. Now you know everything you need to survive on a desert island. Or at least a few things that might help you survive. Hey, are you sleeping? Oh yeah, I was, I was just taking a nap. Well, if you paid attention, you might have a better chance of surviving. Well, if you made better videos, maybe I wouldn't have fallen asleep. Uh, you know you're supposed to light that first, right? That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and remember, if you ever get stuck on a desert island, uh, chances are you're, you're probably gonna die.